we will now like to invite Calvin So once again um, to give us the opening remarks for Future Me. Calvin, please. Um, hi, everyone. Thank you for coming. Um, I think this happened maybe three years ago when I was in uh, Austin, Texas for South by Southwest. And I attended South by Southwest and I thought that was a fantastic show about invention, about creativity, about technology, about the future. And I was wondering why don't we have one here in Singapore? You know, if you think about it, Singapore, you know, if as a country we were a startup country, we were brave, we were new, we were risk takers, we were entrepreneurs. That's what Singapore was. Singapore was a rock, but we made something up out of it and we had the spirit and those values that did. So we should have a show like this and we sh do, should have the people to be able to showcase those values and talent. Uh, and you know, that was something that I was talking about for a bit and then um, credit to Pico. Pico said, you're right, let's try it. Let's be a startup ourselves and let's start this show from the ground up. So we're here to champion the local creativity, the talent that we have, the ideas, the values that we've all had, maybe lost somewhere along the way. We're here to champion the inventors, the do-gooders, the make something up uppers and the dreamers. Because the world is exponential as we looked at it. It's going far faster than we think it is. And we can't keep going at yesterday's pace. We can't keep using yesterday's knowledge for an exponentially changing world. So that's why Future Me is here. And we hope with your support, it can grow and maybe next year it'll be bigger with more people, more people from Singapore, maybe more people from around the region. And that's what we hope. But thank you for your support. So to kick off today's session, I'm going to introduce someone who I think embodies the spirit and the values that we aspire to. I'm putting a bit of pressure on him because he's also my son and it's the first time we're on stage together. But he's here to talk about, he is the future. I'm, I'm old, we're all old, but he is the future. And we should look at the young as the way forward and we should encourage them. And I think he's got an interesting and I think heartfelt message for all of us, young and old, to remind us of what we are and what we were and what we could be. Dylan, you ready? Yeah. <laughs> Come, I'll hold. Just put it on the floor. Okay, so pushy. Okay. Don't be pushy. Everything all right? Yeah, okay. So what's my future me? Well, I live in this world of discovery, of unlimited ideas and possibilities. And I want it to go on forever. It's that feeling where you can dream big and you can make anything happen. But I heard as you grow older, you grow out of it. You forget that feeling. Suddenly, your world of yes becomes this world of maybes and then this world of no's. So I thought to myself, who better than a 12-year-old to help you rediscover that feeling? I also heard that you adults like to read us kids um, life lessons, storybooks. So now it's my turn to read you my story. So sit down like good little adults and let me tell you my story. This is The Big Red Dot, written by my dad and illustrated by me. Once, there was a little red dot. So our hero is a she because more than ever, we must empower and be fairer to our fairer sex. <laughs> she hung around with two bigger friends, Easter and Wester. Everyone got along and respected each other's space, mostly. So we all have friends like this, friends who seem to be bigger and wiser than you. But every now and then, she felt a little restless. She couldn't put a finger on what was missing, mainly because she had no fingers. 
And she asks, is there more to life than this? So it's normal to ask this question and you have to constantly ask it because it's what pushes us forward. Don't forget that life is what you make of it. She told Easter and Wester what was troubling her. And they say, why do you want to change things? Change is bad. You're too small. The world will just eat you up. So how many times have you heard this in your life? That's all I hear. I don't think it's true you take less, less risk when you get old. I think you get old by not taking any risk. The little red dot thought long and hard. Her friends weren't wrong, but she asked herself, do I want to live their lives or mine? Whose voice do I listen to, theirs or mine? So how many of you have asked these questions before? Yes. Okay. Well, at some point in our lives, we have to answer them. The answer was obvious, so the little red dot bade farewell to her friends and went on a big adventure. And Easter says, silly girl, I bet she won't make it past lunch. But the other option would be to live someone else's life. This is a choice you make, no one else's. At the beginning, things were tough and uncertain, but whenever she felt like giving up, she sang the song of try. And it goes like this. If I don't try, I won't know. If I don't know, the fear will grow. So I must try, then I'll know. And when I know, the fear will go. So to me, fear can stop you or it can keep you going. But the question would be, would you rather live a life of knowing or not knowing? I'd rather know. Along her journey, big rocks got in her way. What she lacked in size, she made up for in outsmarts. So, for example, I outsmart my dad every day. <laughs> the trick is to make him think he's winning when actually you are. And his trick is to make me think I'm winning when actually he is. At other times, there were raging rivers to cross. She was always charming and made new friends who could help her. She says, there's my special chicken rice waiting for you on the other side. So in life, there are people you don't get along with. Sometimes you have no choice. You have to come up with new ideas and new ways to get them on your side, be it chicken rice or laksa. There were tall mountains that no one had conquered before. They said no one could climb this, and that's the best reason too. So in school, I'm always taught to follow the model answers. And you're meant to follow the guidebook. But sometimes following the guidebook isn't the best way. Sometimes you write the guidebook. Everyone thought climbing Mount Everest was impossible until someone actually did. Some rained on her parade, but the little red dot remained a bright spot and kept her wits about her. She says, you should really see a doctor. I worry for you. So there are bullies in school and in life for me. But the trick would be to react with a sense of humor. Don't sink down to their level because people that shit on you are usually full of it and aren't worth your time. <laughs> On a few occasions, she encountered some knots, stand for new opportunities to succeed. And it's what most people call failure. She says, plan J didn't work, so let's try plan K. There's always a solution to a problem, but you're never going to find it by giving up. Soon, the little red dot realized the more problems she overcame, the less daunting they became. She says, well, that was a piece of cake. Actually, I could really do with a piece of cake too. So it's like riding a bike. You fall down, you get up. After a while, you stop falling and you never forget how to ride one again. It's the same with life's challenges. 
News of the little red dot travelled far and wide. Other dots from far away lands came to see her. So when you believe in yourself, other people do too. And they will gravitate towards you because you have this aura of self-confidence. You understand this when you start dating. <laughs> like I know. They all wanted to know the secret of her success. And she says, simple. The more you try, the more you learn, the more you achieve. The more you achieve, the more you will start to believe. So the first step is just to try. So it's human nature to want to know the secret ingredient for success. And then if I were to push it all into one word, it would be to try. And they all ask in unison, but weren't you afraid to try? When people ask you if you're afraid of something, it's usually because they themselves are. They wish they were as brave as you. And she answered them in the only way she knew how, and she sang the song of try. Soon everybody was singing the song of try. So a funny thing happens when you tell people that you're just like them, that you're afraid too. I think they become braver because they don't feel so alone anymore. Then came a question that really made her think. Little Red Dot, why do you call yourself the Little Red Dot? Yeah, you don't seem so little to me. This is so true, isn't it? We don't see ourselves as others do. We need to look up to ourselves more. That's when it dawned on her that she was only little in her mind. And she asked, am I the only one who thinks I'm small? So when you realize this, you see yourself in a different light. Sure, puff out your chest, but don't get too cocky. Swagger with humility, or as I call it, humble swag. She thought back on her journey and realized it's how big your spirit is that counts. And she says, you're right. A small outside, but big inside. If you think about it, those are the values we need to succeed in the 21st century. Resilience, creativity, adaptability, and the self-confidence and the courage to go, why and why not? And that's when the little red dot found herself and her place in the world. So remember this, no matter how small you are, there lives a big red dot in you. So the good news is we've had these values all along. It's in our DNA. I mean, we dreamt big and made it happen, didn't we? And we should never forget that. But what's the moral of this story? I think it says we must all continue to dream big and believe we can make it happen. So for example, my big dream is of a world better than it is now. Let's face it, the world's not in good shape. You adults made it this way, and now my generation is going to be stuck with it. Your kids. But together, we can do something about it. All we need are more thinkers, more believers, more creators, more makers, more do-gooders, more people who believe in leaving the world in a better shape than when they found it. We need more big red dots. And hang on. I want to leave the world in a better shape as well. And how I'm going to do that is by making concrete jungles fertile. To do that, we need to have more people planting and growing. And every beginner or novice planter has this initial fear of failure because they overwater or underwater the plant. So my dad, YY and I, uh, created this thing called the GIY stick. Grow it yourself. All you need is a piece of absorbent cloth or string, a soft drink bottle, and simply put them together and it feeds the plant through the capillary effect. So over water, no more. The plant decides how much water it needs and you can see how much it drinks every day. You can even go on a short holiday, like just pop a bigger bottle in. 
Best of all, it's made and designed here in the big red dot. But I know some of you will be thinking, what does this 12-year-old know about making the world better, changing the world, or making foot, uh, concrete jungles fertile? Well, let me answer you in the only way I know how. Hang on, let me just get my guitar. If I don't try, I won't know If I don't know, if you will grow So I must try, then I'll know And when I know, the fear will go So I must try, then I'll know And when I know If you will go. Yeah. Do you guys hear the guitar? Yeah. Okay. So the truth is, we actually have no choice. This is the only world we have. And Mars is still very, very far away. So, ladies and gentlemen, let's never forget to dream big and believe we can make it happen. And we must keep singing the song of try, because the more we do, the bigger our red dots will get. Thank you very much. Whoa, okay, thank you very much. Um, thank you, Dylan, that was great. Um, I think that was what we wanted to kick off, um, the, the spirit of what Future Me is about and hopefully the spirit of what Singapore and what we'll offer is about. You can talk to Dylan outside, feel free afterwards, and over the next two days, he'll be here. Um, that's part of his homework. It's either that or Matt's tuition. <laughs>